you could tell a guy all day long, don't mess with her, she's no damn good. But when he starts fooling himself because he's thinking with the wrong head, you ain't gonna tell him shit that he's gonna listen to. And then inevitably, when it goes exactly the way you fucking told him, he's like, oh my God, why did this happen? Because you didn't fucking listen. Or when women get on their bullshit about something and they just refuse to let it go. They're always throwing in your face, magically ignoring all the shit that they've ever done, right? But they just won't let it go. They'll carry that grudge and it will consume them. And they just have to fucking keep going back to it. That's what this shit reminds me of with Tony Khan. Are you happy now? You just had to fucking do it. You had days to think about this. And you proceeded. And then as shit goes down Wednesday night, and you have the junk and CM Punk brawl footage from All In shown on Dynamite, the inevitable happens. It's a fire. And everybody is mocking you and knocking you and criticizing you to kingdom fucking come. Big shot. All you did in that video was basically look CM Punk looked like he was mostly telling the truth in his aerial. Meanwhile, you made one of the top stars for another company look strong. One of your own top stars look weak and soft like a punk bitch. And it ends up looking like largely a big nothing burger. And what's so bad about this? It wasn't like it was a jack in the box. You go do Oh, pops Tony Khan and you don't fucking know what's going on. You had this footage for months. You knew what was on there. And somewhere along the way you convinced yourself that this was a good idea to waste your precious, precious national television time on because of what? You expected this to go well? You expected this to pop a big number? You expected this to do anything other than make you and your company look like an absolute third-rate Bush League fucking cloud show? Are you happy now? Like this shit was so bad that even the AEW stand media that has bent over backwards the past four and a half years to defend everything, good or bad, involving every AEW and minimal decision and excuse every fucking thing, even found them, at least initially on Wednesday night before they remembered the mission statement and the goal here, got to help out your boy TK because you want that fucking access, even realizing this shit. Even they were saying this was dumb. This was really bad. It looks really bad. They couldn't spin it. It took them hours before they could circle the wagons. And they had their AEW neckbeard circle jerk and they said, yeah, now we're back at it. It's too late by then. Your spinners couldn't even spin at this point. And meanwhile, take to Twitter and I'm going to read what you tweeted on April 11th. And I quote, just got the great news from at TBS Network. Last night, Wednesday night, AEW Dynamite last week, plus up 17% over prior six-week average. Thank you all watching AEW Wednesday. See you at a stacked TBS wrestling show Wednesday in Indy and rampaging and colliding this weekend on TNT, unquote. End quote, whatever the hell. Now, first of all, we could go into, this is a college-educated guy, and how, where the fuck is he coming up with this math that just isn't mathing? Was it from the Scott Steiner School of fucking math? I don't know. 
but he's actually trying to spin this like a good thing instead of shutting the fuck up and taking his lumps for the dumb dick decision. My response to him is show you show one of the top stars for another company making one of your existing talent barely broke 800,000 viewers and you're excited about this? You're excited about this? How sad is it that this company's been around four and a half years and their laws to date still are the Big Bang Theory, some unfunny fucking comedy that's been in syndication for years. Yeah, I fucking said it. You don't like it, go fuck yourself. And CM Punk, who's not even there with the company anymore. Those are your top two draws. And that big ratings pop you were expecting in the third quarter when you actually apparently showed this, there was barely a blip in the radar in terms of the viewership. And then instantly what happened? You lost about 157,000 viewers the rest of the night because people looked at this farce and said, fuck this, I'm out. Are you happy now? On what possible planet did you think this was a good idea? In what stratosphere did you think there was going to be any type of satisfying payoff here? In what universe did you think that you were going to be able to do anything to spin this into any type of anything other than an absolute clown fucking show negative ass result for yourself at AEW? Like, what the hell were you doing? How can anybody defend this? How come nobody stopped Tony Khan? How come nobody said, Tony, this is a really stupid idea. Do not do it. If you do it, I leave. And maybe it would have taken that extreme. But by God, somebody needed to step up and do something because clearly... This nepotistic daddy's boy doesn't have enough self-control and judgment to know, hey, this might backfire in my damn face. And what do you have now? A show that hemorrhaged viewers close to a quarter of its audience over the course of two hours, a show that barely cracked 800,000 viewers, a show where you made somebody else's top talent look great and your own top talent look stupid. You made yourself look like a fucking bumbling fool and bulbous clown in the process. And you were expecting this to make people excited about your show next week and going forward? Don't you have a pay-per-view coming up? You'd rather devote time to showing something that happened back in August. We're supposed to be past that at this point. That, oh, by the way, you can't pay this off. You're not paying this off with the Bucks versus FTR. Go fuck yourself. That's nothing here. The only payoff would be Jack Perry and CM Punk and ding dong, dumb dick, you can't do that because CM Punk is no longer an AEW contract and talent. He's contracted to the WWE. Now, sir, I can sit there and say, hey, there's a piece of this that makes CM Punk look stupid too. It makes CM Punk look like exactly what the fuck I thought he's always been. But it doesn't make me respect him less. If anything, it just gives me believability and credibility to all the reports you've seen over the years and heard over the years and all the things you've observed over the years. And you're like, yeah, this guy's kind of a fucking pain in the ass. He's an asshole. He's a jerk. And he has all of that and more. But nothing surprised me about that. What did surprise me, though, is how for a company that has spent so much money in recent months to bring in big name talent like Okada, like Will Ospreay, like Mercedes Monet, and not be able to capitalize on any of that, to sit there and during the show have your fans, the whatever remaining fans you got actually paying to go to your shit shows in person, chanting for another company's top guy. 
and you somehow thought that this was going to be a good thing for you. Tony Khan, are you happy now? You ought to be. You brought this on your goddamn self because you didn't want to fucking listen. Didn't want to fucking listen. You deserve everything that you get coming out of this. You made the bed, now you have to lie in it. 